Hi, this is Paul Salt from iPhone Dev TV. If you've been following along, we've learned how to create buttons in Xcode using Interface Builder. So here I can just walk through the buttons. We've got our system button up top. We've got a normal button. That's These two buttons are system. This one's got our background image applied to the normal state. And this one has our highlighted image applied to the normal state. So you can see what the two images look like. This helps you determine if you have any artifacting. The next step was to create a totally custom button. This required changing the font size and the title color because that changes. You don't get those two things for free with a custom button in Xcode Interface Builder. So you'll have to manually control that with a custom button. And here you can see the state changes. And then we have our custom button. We had a little bit of code to do an animation. So you can check out the project or the previous video to see how that works. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a custom button in code and we're going to actually use a new art asset. So this is our blue button and let's jump right into our viewcontroller.m. So right in here, we're going to go ahead and create a new button. I'm going to give myself some space and let's add a comment. All right. So right here, we're going to create a UI button and we'll call it button. Actually, let's call it blue button. All right, so when you press this button, magical things will happen and it'll be awesome. So you can use this button anywhere in your iPhone app. We'll do a button with type and this is going to be a UI button type custom. Now, we don't want to do system unless you want to get the, the stuff you get for free, like the tint color and the automatic fade out. For here, we want to do custom because we want that highlighted image to work. It won't work otherwise. So now this is going to be super exciting. We'll add some font and color to it and a title is probably more important. So let's go ahead and add the title. And we want to set the title, not the title color first. So here our title is going to be something like press me. That's going to encourage you to touch it. And then we've got a condition here and that is going to be our control event. So we'll go ahead control, sorry, state normal. Sometimes autocomplete gives you the wrong things and it makes it a little confusing. So this is going to be the title when it's pressed or when it's not pressed. Now, if you specifically set one text to appear when it's the highlighted state, it, the text will change for you. So we've got a title. Let's go ahead and add this to our view. So what we'll need to do here is self dot view and then add sub view. And here we pass in the blue button. And once we do that, we can go ahead and run and see what happens. Now, if you're like me, you're wondering, okay, where did the button go? Well, there's a couple issues here. First, we didn't set the position of the button. And secondly, we didn't set how big it was. Now we can automatically have the button size itself up. So this might help us find it. So if we do a size to fit, that will give us a default size. And here we see it up top. Now it's totally unimpressive and we don't even get any visual feedback when we tap on it. And that's because it's a custom button. Nothing is happening to the color of the text. Nothing is happening to the background. There is no background. So we're going to have to go ahead and adjust the background and get those images in here. So our first task is going to be to load the images. The next task is going to be to make the button interactive. And we'll use that animation again. So let's go ahead and grab our images. Now we're going to do this a little bit differently than we did before. And it's going to require a little bit more code than doing an interface builder. Now I didn't add the slicing for these two images. They're actually in the project and we can load them up, but we'll have to actually make these images resizable ourselves. So let's go ahead and create our first image. And this is going to be the blue button normal image and we'll load this using the UI image method image named and then we pass in the name of it. So it's blue button normal. Now if you misspell this, it's not going to work and also make sure you don't do the at 2x. In order to get that to work correctly, Xcode will automatically or the iPhone will automatically use the correct asset. All you do is you specify the asset without the 2x and it just works. So that's going to give us a button image. And the next thing we want to do is we want to set that. So if I say blue button and then 
set background image is the method that we're looking for. And we pass in the blue button normal image for the control state, UI control state normal is gonna be what we'll start with. So we've added it, we've set the background. Now we get some of that default behavior. So once we have a background image, it will give us some context that we're pressing it. We need to set the position and we need to move it down here. And we also need to make the button a little bit bigger. So the size to fit is really gonna make it so this button's cramped and it's not gonna have the space that we have over here. So let's go ahead and make the button the same size as our other buttons, which is gonna be 44 points tall and then 140 points long. So I'll come down here. We we're doing size to fit. Instead of doing that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say blue button dot bounds. Now you could do this with the frame but I like to do the bounds because it's a little bit easier to work with in the frame because you can set the center with another line of code. So we're gonna first set the bounds, then we're gonna set the center, and that's gonna reposition where the button is. So CG, rec make. The other reason to do bounds is you can just do zeros for the X and the Y, so you don't have to worry about that. And then the width is gonna be 140 points, and our height is gonna be 44 points. So that's gonna match the size of the other buttons. Next, we want to set the position. So we have a center attribute here. And in order to create this, we need to create a CG point make. And then for our center, I know that the iPhone in the current demo that we're doing is going to be 320 points or points big. Yes. I know that the iPhone is going to be 320 points big. And I know that the center is going to be if I divide that by two. So I'm going to make sure that I use uh, decimal places, that'll give me non-integer division, which means it won't truncate. You typically don't want to have uh, decimal places when you're placing things if you want pixel perfect, but I'll just go with it just to show you how it's gonna work out. And then our Y coordinate, I'm gonna do something like 380, which is towards the bottom, and we'll see if this looks good. All right, so now we've got our button, and it looked a lot better when it was a little bit smaller. We're seeing some artifacting here on the corners. So we have to make our image stretchable. Right now it's not stretchable. We're not using the asset catalog and we're gonna have to go ahead and fix that. So the fix for that is to actually create another version of the image or you can use the same name. So I'll just do this on the next line. So blue button normal image is going to be equal to itself and there's a method that we can call on it to make it resizable. So if I do blue button normal image, we get this method called resizable image with cap insets. If we go ahead and use the default one, this will just let us specify the UI edge insets. And if I start typing UI edge insets make, you'll see this method right here. Actually, this is a function and we can call this to create the edges. Now, this is a little bit different than Interface Builder. In Interface Builder, when you wanna make a resizable image, you just set those, those borders. What I like to do, depending on how I construct the image, I normally do half the, the width of the image. So typically that would be 44 since it's a 88 size image. Uh, but the problem we have with this is it won't work. What we're gonna see is we've got our image here, the corners look great, but this does not look good. So when we're working in code, the same attributes that might work in Interface Builder are actually not the same here. So here we actually have to do half of the point size for the edge insets. So it's a little bit of a different control than we get with Interface Builder. And if we do that, now everything is working. So the reason we do this is because our blue button image, if I pull it up and we pull up the inspector, is 88 pixels wide. And if we cut that in half for the non-retina, that's gonna be 44 points. Now, 44 points, if we divide that by two, we get 22. So that's where that number comes from. All right, so we only have one of the images working. Now it's just doing the default sort of fade out. And if we wanna customize that because we have an app design, we're gonna to have to load another image. So let's go ahead, do the same type of thing, but we'll have our blue button, and this is gonna be our highlighted, our highlight image. 
And so you're gonna have to pause the video. I'm gonna type this real quick. Um, pause the video if you need to catch up. I guess it is called highlighted and it's gonna be .png. And then on the next line, we will make it resizable. And I'm gonna fix this so it says highlighted. So fix that on your copy if you are following along. And here we just use the name again, blue button image highlighted or blue button highlighted image. And then we want a resizable image using that image. And we pass it the UI edge insets make, which is allowing us to make this description for how the edges are gonna look. And it's, it's, this is basically letting us avoid the corners so that we make the center pixel stretchable. So that's our image. Now all we have to do is set this as the background. So blue button, set background image. Now this is where we're a little bit different from the previous one. This is our blue button highlighted image and our state is gonna be UI control state highlighted. Now if you do it for the normal, it's gonna make it look like your button is pressed and it's not the intended behavior. So doing this, we get our custom image that is now loading and you can see how that image sort of looks when we switch between these two. It's not super different from what uh, Xcode is doing by itself. And if we run it again, you can see that there's a tiny shine on the bottom, um, but it's really up to you to customize how you want your buttons to look. You don't have to add as much decoration on iOS, so you might not want that, or maybe you do want to stand out from the typical iOS 7 or iOS 8 button. All right, so that is how to customize the button. In the last part, we want to make this interactive. So we added a method down here that allows us to get the animation, and we can get that by just adding the targets to this blue button. So we can say blue button, add target, and self is going to mean that it's going to happen in this code file. Our selector is going to be the button touch down and our control event is going to be the UI control event touch down and then we're going to add the other part otherwise it will never unfade so we'll add another selector and this will be touch up inside for the control event UI control event touch up inside. So now you can pause the video if you're not caught up. I'll stop it and rerun it. And you see that it faded out the text and it fades back in. Now this is white text. You might not want white and you might want the same color or same sort of font as the previous one. So I'll show you how to change the, the tint color. And then I'll show you how to adjust the font size. So to set our tint color, we'll do blue button, set title color. And then here I can pass in the views tint color. So this will use the, the view, which is the, is part of the hierarchy. So that's what's containing our button. And any changes to the tint color at the view level will propagate down to this button now that we're doing this in code. And so this will be for the UI control state normal. And then the last thing I wanna do is set the font. So let's go ahead and run it again. You can now see that we're using the system font. Now that doesn't stand out as much, but if I were to change that in the view, so let's go to our main.storyboard. And in here I can select the view. So you can see that the view contains all of these buttons right here. So all those buttons are inside of it. And if we go ahead and change the view's tint color to something like this color, we'll see that those buttons change, but our custom buttons don't, not in an interface builder, and we'll stop and run. And now we can see that this has changed. This is updated. We didn't update this one. That's something that we could change. So if you wanted to, you could set that. And the last thing, last couple of things I want to do is I want to update this font. So let's set... I think we need to get access to the title label and then we can set the font on it. So here we're gonna create a UI font and this is gonna be a font with 
no, we want system font. If you do font width, you can specify it. I just want the system one, so we'll go ahead with this. And the size we want is 15 to match the system default size. So if we go ahead and run again, our button's a little bit smaller. It matches the size of the text on the, the top ones. And it looks a little bit nicer. It's more interactive. So there you have it. This is a custom button that we created in code. It did take quite a few lines of code. So we've got 31 all the way down to, to 61. Now there are some white spaces in here, but that's a considerable amount of code to get buttons working in code. But once you do it, it's fully customizable. You can change the font color, you can change the size, you can do animations with it. And so that's what I showed you in this tutorial. So now what I want you to do, play around with these buttons, try to create another button in code. And maybe you wanna create a method that can create more buttons for you so that you don't have to keep rewriting the same code. So have a whirl at that. If you like this video and this was helpful for you to create buttons in Xcode for your iPhone apps, please subscribe and like the video. Thanks for watching.